Hi, I'm Jenny and welcome to It's Your Move. Hey, welcome to the It's Your Move session. A special time together for you to think about your move up to secondary school. In our session together today, there's going to be lots of activities, things to do, things to think about and some advice from those who've gone before you and hopefully some fun there too. But to kick us off in our time together today, I've got a big question for you. On a scale of one to 10, how ready do you feel for secondary school? If 10 is you are super ready, feeling really confident about it, and one is you're feeling quite anxious and worried about it, I wonder what mark would you give yourself? Have a think about that now. So I wonder, what score did you give yourself? Do you know, it doesn't matter if you gave yourself a one, three, five or ten. All of those feelings are OK right now. Some people are feeling more confident than others. Some are moving up to a secondary school where your older brother or sister's already there. Or there might be a big group of you moving up together. But others of you might be moving on your own. And it's a bit more scary. But wherever you're a 10 or a 1, we're hoping that in today's session, we're going to help you all to think about how when you get to secondary school, you can not only survive, but thrive and have a great time whilst you're there. Try to remember that score you gave yourself because we're going to need it later on in the session. Do you know we're all probably scared of something or have things that make us a little bit nervous and worried? For me, it's peacocks. I really don't like them. I find them unpredictable and weird. I just don't like them. And for others, when the fear takes over, it becomes something called a phobia. And you know, there's hundreds of different phobias, things that people are scared of. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to play a game. And I'm going to tell you the names of three different phobias and give you some options for what they might be the fear of. And you've got to make a decision as to which one you think is the correct answer. So are you ready for your first one? The first one is arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. Is that the fear of arches, the fear of spiders or the fear of outdoor coats? What do you think? And the correct answer is the fear of spiders. Probably one that's quite common for many people. Lots of people don't like spiders, do they? Next up, we have cyclophobia. Cyclophobia. Is that a fear of circuses, a fear of circles, or a fear of bicycles? Cyclophobia. Which one do you think it is? And the answer is a fear of bicycles. Who knew it? Some people have a fear of bicycles. Next up, now this is a long word, it is sesquipedelophobia. Sesquipedelophobia. What is sesquipedelophobia? Is it a fear of trees? Is it a fear of squids? Or is it a fear of long words? And the answer is a fear of long words, which is really funny because it's one of the longest words going, isn't it? So squipidelophobia, fear of long words. Who knew? Well, there's so many different things that people get scared of or get anxious and worried about. And moving up to secondary school might be something that you're worried about right now. And we're going to be thinking a bit about how we can cope with different worries that we face next. <laughs> Okay, for this next activity, I need to get you all moving a bit. So I want you all to stand up onto your feet where you are. That's it, stand up. Great. Now what's going to happen is I've got a list of six different worries that others who've gone before you said were things they were worried about for starting secondary school. And as I say each one, I want you to think, how do you feel about that worry? If it's something you feel really anxious about, I want you to take your hands and put them on your hips. If it's something you're a little bit worried about, maybe, I want you to cross 
your arms in front of you. If it's something you're not worried about at all, I want you to stick your hands in the air. So when I say the worry, if it's something you feel really anxious about, hands on your hips, little bit anxious about, cross your arms, not worried about, put your hands up in the air. Oh, and one more thing, you need to have your eyes shut when you do this, so that the only person who's gonna know how you respond is your teacher. So that's it, everyone ready? On your feet, eyes shut. Just waiting for everyone to shut their eyes. No peeking. I can see you. That's it, close your eyes. Are you ready? Okay, the first one is your journey to and from secondary school. How are you feeling about that? Hands on hips, cross your arms or hands in the air, go. Great job. Next up, just keep your eyes shut. We have getting lost. If getting lost is something you're worried about, might be getting lost on the way to school or getting lost when you're in the building. Hands on your hips if you're worried about it. Cross your arms, a little bit worried. Hands in the air, not worried at all. Okay, next one, homework. If homework is something you're worried about, how do you feel about it? Hands on your hips or cross your arms or hands in the air. How do you feel about homework? Okay, keeping your eyes shut. The next one is teachers. The teachers, how are you feeling about the teachers? Pick your move. And next up, we have being the youngest. How are you feeling about going to being the youngest? And our last one is making friends. How are you feeling about making friends? Pick your action. Great joining in there. We're now going to hear from three pupils who've gone before you and started at secondary school. They're going to share a bit about what their fears were and how they disappeared. Have a look at this. My biggest concerns about moving to school was not making friends and getting lost, but they're, they're nothing to worry about now. My biggest concerns are all the children had lessons and going to the wrong lesson. My biggest concerns was getting lost and not knowing where I was going to go. Um, but they're not my concerns anymore and I have a lot of friends and I know my way around school. So it's natural to have fears. Everybody does. But often they will disappear. Well, it's time for another game. In fact, a bit of a competition this time. Do you know, lots of you might have to learn new skills going to secondary school. And one that some of you might need to learn is how to tie a tie. Now, fortunately, we've got some experts on hand to show you how to do it. Have a look at this. Hello, my name's Ruben, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make the perfect tie. And this is how not to tie a tie. What are you gonna oh, This is really nice. nice. Um, even if you think your ties are nice, I don't think your teachers like it. Well, if you think you're so perfect, why don't you show us how to do it? I will. Firstly, get the thick bit of the tie and make sure it's longer than the other. Next, cross it over into an X. Then, repeat that. Then, you get the thick bit of the tie and put it through the hole that you've created. Once you've done that, put it through the other hole below and then fasten it to your collar. And that's how you make a perfect tie. In case you didn't get that, here it comes again. Whew, that was fast, wasn't it? Now, for this competition, what I'm gonna need is three or four volunteers. And what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go up to the front of the class and you're gonna be given a tie. And you're going to see from the three or four of you who can tie it the fastest. The rest of the class are going to judge them based on your speed, your accuracy, how neat it is, whether it's the right length. So three or four volunteers. I'm going to let your teacher decide now who that's going to be.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's now time for some top tips for starting at secondary school. And to kick us off, we've got some advice from those pupils you heard before. Have a listen to this. I was in the same situation as many year sixes, as like I was quite worried that I wouldn't make any friends. But you'll notice that everyone's in the same boat as you, so like when you come to the school, um, you, you'll find out there's quite a lot of people that you'll be able to get in touch with and make friends. Um, I feel like when you get to, like when you move into secondary school, there's probably going to be some friends from primary school, and like you can just stick with them if you're not too confident with speaking to people, then like you two can go and make friends with other people, yeah. I would say that um, once you talk to one person, you find talking to other people because, like you were saying, most people are in the same boat, so they'll also be nervous about talking to other people, so. That was great advice, wasn't it? Now here's some more top tips taken from Scripture Union's brilliant It's Your Move book. Equipment. You'll likely have a set of things that you're expected to bring to school every day like pens and books. The best thing that you can do is to write yourself a daily checklist, pack your bag the night before, then double check it in the morning before you leave. Rules. Your school will have its own set of rules that you are expected to follow, so find out what they are and stick to them. Clubs. There will be plenty of clubs at your new school, either at lunchtime or after school. These will be your chance to play more sports, learn a musical instrument, or develop other interests. And this can be a great way to meet new people. Be you. We are all unique for a reason. There is something you have to offer the world that no one else has. Work to improve yourself, but do it because you want to, to be the best version of you, not a copy of someone else. Well, so far, we thought mainly about surviving at secondary school. But we want to move on from that to think about some of the best, most exciting parts of moving up. And so I wonder, what is it that you're most looking forward to in your move to secondary school? What are you most looking forward to? Why not discuss that with the people around you now? So what was it that you were most looking forward to? Is it the new building, the facilities that are going to be available? Maybe you're looking forward to the sport or the music or the drama, taking subjects you've never been able to do before, or making new friends and trying so many new experiences. What an opportunity to thrive and try so many new things. It's just going to be so exciting. I bet you can't wait. <laughs> of course, it's certain that all of us will go through tough times. That's part of our life isn't it that we have ups and downs along the way we're actually going to hear a story now that's taken from the bible and it's when jesus and his friends called the disciples went out on a boat and got caught in a storm it's an amazing story with a great ending i hope you enjoy it imagine you're one of jesus disciples you're all gathered by the shores of lake galilee it's a hot and humid day and the sun beats down flies buzz lazily around your head you try to swap them away, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. Some of the disciples are laughing and joking around, standing in the shallows of the lake and splashing each other. Smiling at his friends, who are now soaked through, Jesus walks over to the boat. Let's cross to the other side, he says. People clamber in. The disciples in the water stop messing around and stop pushing the boat out before jumping in themselves. It's no less humid out on the lake and you let your hand drag in the cool waters. Looking over the side of the boat, you can see the odd fish swimming here and there. The heat seems to have affected them too, they're swimming so slowly. Some of the disciples are still laughing about the water fight and trying to dry themselves off in the sun. You look up into the sky. It's clear up above, but over in the distance, dark clouds are gathering. You point it out to the others. Some of them don't seem that bothered. Matthew laughs when you tell him. But then he used to be a tax collector, so what does he know about the lake? But the ones who have fished here for years look worried. They point at the gathering clouds, getting closer, and mutter about what to do. You turn to tell Jesus and ask him what he thinks, but he's spread out at the back of the boat and has fallen asleep. 
a breeze gets up and suddenly the sun doesn't seem as hot. The boat starts to pitch a little and a cup rolls off a bench and onto the floor. Then wind fills the sails and the boat rocks more sharply. You have to grab hold to stop yourself from falling off your seat. The fishermen look nervously up into the darkening skies and talk about what to do. The boat is rolling more violently now and it's started to rain. They rush about the boat, pulling on ropes and winding in sails and strapping down loose baggage. You notice that Jesus is still asleep. You think about waking him, but the fishermen seem to have got everything under control. Matthew, though, has started to panic. Suddenly, a huge wave hits the boat and water rushes in over the side. You cling to the side of the boat to stop yourself from being washed overboard. Another wave hits and Matthew grabs hold on, onto your arm to steady himself and almost throws both of you into the water. He's screaming in your ear. In fact, everyone is screaming. This is it. You're going to die. Somebody rushes at Jesus. He's still asleep. Matthew shouts at him, teacher, teacher, we're going to drown. Jesus looks at him, gets up and tells the winds and the waves to stop and suddenly everything is calm. You look at the others. You're confused. They're confused. Who is this, someone asks. Who is this that commands the winds and the waters? And they obey him. Wow, what a great story. How cool was that? I wonder, how do you think you'd have felt if you'd have been on that boat? Also, what do you think the disciples learnt about Jesus through this experience? Why don't you take a few moments to think about those two questions? How would you have felt if you were on the boat? And what do you think the disciples learnt about Jesus? Do you know, Christians believe that Jesus is always with them and that he can help calm different storms or situations in their lives. Those three friends who've been helping us and sharing their experience in our session today, well, they're all Christians too. And they're going to share with you now a bit about how their faith has impacted them. Have a listen to this. I was really scared going into secondary school, but um, he really helped me have confidence to go into school and just really have a smile on my face and be able to like shine a light. Jesus helped me by, like, with my school life, like, he made sure that, like, because he already knows what's going to happen in your life. I always find when quite stressed with things, it's just uh, like when you're stressed about your homework and you get really overwhelmed, but just put it out of the way and spend some quiet time with God. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed today's session. And I hope you feel a bit more ready for your move up to secondary school too. Do you remember in that story we looked at, Jesus made a difference to his friends when they were caught in that ferocious storm. And I believe Jesus makes a difference to my life too. And sometimes I think Jesus takes away the storms that we face. And sometimes he doesn't take the storm away, but he can give us comfort and courage knowing that he's there with us as we face different situations. For me, there was a time when I felt quite worried and afraid, and it was when I started secondary school too. I was the only one from my primary school going, and it was a big change. I was going to have to get on the train, on the underground, uh, to get to and from school day by day. And I was quite worried about it. I was worried about making friends. I was worried about getting lost on the journey or getting lost in the school building. And different people at the church I attended at the time, they prayed for me and they prayed that I'd have courage and confidence and that I'd make new friends. And, you know, one of the things I found is that everyone's in the same boat when they start a secondary school. Even the super confident people are often worried about something. But for me, knowing that God was with me gave me that confidence inside to know that actually I wasn't alone in any of those situations. And I believe Jesus can be the same for you, too to be someone who's there with you, giving you courage and confidence each step of the way. I wonder, what do you think? Why don't you take a moment to close your eyes and think about the different things we've thought about in our session together today? Now I'm gonna finish with a prayer and if you want to make it your prayer, you can say amen at the end after me, which just means I agree. 
Or if you're someone who doesn't want to say a prayer today, why don't you just take a moment to close your eyes and think about what it is that you are looking forward to about moving up to secondary school and the things that you want to get ready for. But I'm going to pray now. Dear God, thank you for the chance we have had to consider this exciting stage in our lives. Help us to know that you are powerful and that you can do anything. And you're always there to help us whenever we ask you. Amen. Well, we're about to finish our time together, but I want to take you back now to right at the start of this presentation. Do you remember I asked you a question on a scale of one to ten, how you're feeling about starting secondary school, where one was that you're really anxious and worried and ten was that you're super confident and you gave yourself a mark for it. Well, I'm wondering now whether your mark has changed. So why don't you all get up onto your feet for me? That's it. Everyone stand up. Great. Now, what we're going to do is I want you to think about that mark you gave yourself at the start. And if you think that through this session, you're feeling like actually you might have gone up a little bit. Maybe you were three and now you're feeling more higher up the scale. If you think your number's gone up, I want you to stick your thumbs up in front of you when I say go in a minute. If you think you've stayed the same, I want you to put your thumbs to the side. And if you think actually you're a bit more worried and nervous now, then I want you to put your thumbs down like this. So I'm going to do thumbs up if your score's gone up, thumbs to the side if you've stayed the same, or thumbs down if your score's gone down. Oh yeah, but this time, once again, I want you to close your eyes whilst you think about it. Well, thanks so much for joining with me in our session today. I hope that you've enjoyed it and it's given you something to think about to make you ready to go on to thrive when you get to secondary school. And make sure you enjoy the rest of your term in year six too. Do you know if there's ever anything that you're not feeling okay about, it's important that you talk to someone about it. It might be someone in school who you know you can trust or a friend or a family member, but the best thing you can do if you're worried is to talk to someone. Don't keep it into yourself. Well, I hope that when you go up to secondary school, you have a great time. I hope you really enjoy it and make so many new friends when you get there. But before that, have a fantastic summer holiday too and enjoy yourself making memories and having fun.